Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. This is going to be my Captain America Marvel Infinity Saga rewatch breakdown for Marvel Phase 4. We're covering all the Easter eggs, references, and foreshadowing for Marvel Phase 4, an Avengers Endgame that we missed the first time we watched the movie. As part of this, we're doing a big giveaway for the Infinity Saga box set of all the movies. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Captain America moment on the video. So careful for spoilers for all the Marvel movies so far. We'll number these Easter eggs a little differently as we go through the movie. So starting at the beginning, the movie begins with Captain America's body being discovered in the wreckage of Red Skull's bomber under the ice in the Arctic. You notice that that was part of Nick Fury's map at the end of Iron Man 2. You may remember from my Incredible Hulk breakdown video that there was actually a deleted scene from that movie where Hulk goes to this part of the Arctic where his body was found in an attempt to kill himself and when the Hulk comes out to stop him he pounds the ice in frustration creating a shockwave that was meant to unearth Captain America's shield. So effectively the Hulk is responsible for the military finding Captain America's body in the first place because they had not been able to find it up to that point. Then we travel to Tonsberg, Norway in 1942 where Red Skull goes to steal the Tesseract. It's the same town where Odin battled the Frost Giants in the first Thor flashback. It's the same location which he would eventually go to die in Thor Ragnarok. And it's the same town where Thor would later build New Asgard after Avengers Infinity War. The reason why Odin hid the Tesseract here is mostly because the town itself was special to him. He visited it many times over the centuries. There was even a scene in the Thor movie where Eric Selvig is reading a book depicting Thor and Odin bringing the Tesseract to Earth. We meet Red Skull for the first time as Johann Schmidt wearing his special human form makeup, Captain America's most infamous villain from the classic comics. Later, during Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame though, when they brought him back as the Guardian of the Soul Stone, he was played by a different actor, Ross Mark Hand from The Walking Dead. He does a pretty good Hugo Weaving Red Skull impression, but later when Hugo Weaving was asked why he didn't come back to do this for Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, he said that originally Marvel had plans to do all three Captain America movies with Red Skull, changing everything we know about Captain America Winter Soldier and Civil War with Baron Zemo. He said originally with each new movie, his role as Red Skull was supposed to grow as well as the amount of money that Marvel would pay him for each of the movies. So when they didn't bring him back for Winter Soldier or Civil War and then asked him to come back for Infinity War for a pittance, a really small amount of money, he told them, no, I'm not coming back. In that original version of the MCU where the Red Skull would have fit into Winter Soldier and Civil War would have mostly been as a shadow figure hanging above everything, manipulating everything from behind the scenes. But in this opening scene, they establish the creation of Hydra. The name of their group comes from the mythical Hydra, the monster with many heads when you cut one off to grow back in its place, a reference to Captain America defeating Red Skull, cutting the head off at the end of the movie. But then by present day, Hydra has multiplied its numbers by a thousandfold. The priest in charge of the church is played by David Bradley, who you all probably recognize from the Harry Potter movies or as Walder Frey from Game of Thrones. I wonder if this priest here loves pie just as much as he does. The Tesseract itself is hidden inside the carving of the world tree. The button to release it is actually the Eye of the Serpent, which is a reference to the Midgard Serpent. In Norse mythology, the Midgard Serpent is Loki's offspring, but in the MCU, there's an actual real Midgard Serpent that they had tried to include in the first Thor movie. It was removed for budgetary reasons, but then they tried to bring it back during Avengers Infinity War. In this Avengers Infinity War deleted scene, you can see Thor and Rocket fighting the Midgard Serpent during this big battle of Wakanda at the end of the movie. They wound up deleting that scene for budgetary reasons as well. Maybe they'll bring back the Midgard Serpent during Thor 4 Love and Thunder, since some of that movie will have to take place on Earth around New Asgard. The story of the Tesseract itself in the MCU is a little different from Marvel Comics. The reason why they included it in this movie was all foreshadowing for the first Avengers movie, but also because the Tesseract is a reference to the Cosmic Cube in Marvel Comics, which is a big Captain America Red Skull story beat. In those classic comics, the Red Skull is always after the Cosmic Cube, but in the comics, the cube itself does not contain an Infinity Stone. Kevin Feige said that in the MCU movies, they decided to make the Tesseract the Space Stone just to keep the overarching story of Thanos and the Infinity Gauntlet a little easier to follow for people that did not read the comics. The fact that Red Skull shatters the fake Tesseract is foreshadowing for this scene of Thanos smashing the Tesseract to reveal the Space Stone during Avengers Infinity War, he has a line of dialogue about the Fuhrer digging in the desert for trinkets, which is a big reference to Indiana Jones in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you probably noticed several other Raiders of the Lost Ark references in some of the scenes. 
like the ending scene of the movie where Red Skull seemingly disintegrates as he's sucked through space by the space stone just like the ending of Raiders with them getting sucked up into the sky. We get our first iconic line and use of the shield in the alleyway after he pisses off a movie heckler. They would repeat this same line several times throughout the MCU movies. I can do this all day. 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 Yeah, I know. I know. You also notice behind him here while he's fighting this guy, the word Panther appears on a boxing poster foreshadowing his eventual fight against Black Panther during Captain America's Civil War. He's saved by Bucky, who's getting ready to ship out himself, who tells Steve that they're going, get it, to the future, literally and metaphorically foreshadowing their entire story in the MCU. They then head to the metaphorical future at the Stark Expo, which we would later see during Iron Man 2. The original one is from Howard Stark, who's showing off early prototypes for the Iron Man Repulsor technology, using a precursor for what would eventually become the Lola car that Coulson would later retrofit and use himself. We see the original Human Torch from Marvel Comics. It's a cool Easter egg for a bunch of different things, though. It's an Easter egg for not only the original Human Torch, but also the original Vision in the comics, and it's a clever reference to Chris Evans' previous role as the Human Torch in the Fantastic Four movies and the eventual debut of the new version of the Fantastic Four in the MCU after Marvel Phase 4. The original Human Torch was also part of the Invaders team with Captain America and, get it, Namor, another Marvel mutant character that they've teased will debut in an upcoming movie. Most people believe that that will be Black Panther 2 because of the way this scene goes down in Avengers Endgame. The writers also revealed that this was intentionally meant to be a Namor Easter egg. So you can see early on that Kevin Feige always envisioned crossing all of Marvel's comic book characters over like the X-Men and Fantastic Four with the Avengers. There's also some deleted scenes that Kevin Feige had wanted to include Wolverine and Magneto in some of these World War II moments that I'll talk about in a second too. So there was a lot of X-Men stuff that they had planned to include in these original Phase 1 movies. Cap and Bucky have their don't do anything stupid conversation setting up a beat that they would later repeat during Avengers Endgame in their final goodbyes. Steve Rogers meets Dr. Erskine for the first time, who says he's from Queens. Cap says he's from Brooklyn, a line that they would later bring back for Spider-Man and Captain America Civil War. And then we meet Zola for the first time, who's working on Tesseract weapons with Red Skull. But his face is projected on a screen, foreshadowing his future in The Winter Soldier. And it's another moment that they brought back in Avengers Endgame when they focus on the old computer screen in the 70s in that basement when Howard Stark is yelling for Zola, looking for him. It's also meant to be a reference to comic book Arnim Zola, who winds up creating an artificial body for himself. Later in this Captain America movie, you see diagrams of that robot body. We meet Peggy Carter for the first time. Captain America throws himself on that fake grenade, believing it's real, foreshadowing pretty much every heroic decision that he makes later in MCU movies. Really good example is the Russos revealed that had Iron Man not jumped at the chance to sacrifice himself in Avengers Endgame, snapping his nano gauntlet, Captain America would have been the one to throw himself metaphorically on that grenade. Erskine tells Captain America about his history with Red Skull and the Super Soldier Serum. Later, the U.S. military would adapt this program into the Weapons Plus program, something General Ross talked about during the Incredible Hulk movie. In present day, with each successive iteration of the Weapons Plus program, they attempt to create Super Soldiers using slightly different methods and different versions of the serum. The upcoming Marvel Phase 4 Falcon and Winter Soldier series on Disney Plus is going to continue this Weapons Plus storyline when they learn that Thunderbolt Ross and someone else has resurrected the program, using it to create the new dark version of Captain America with U.S. Agent from the comics. He's a version of Captain America that Thunderbolt Ross can control like a finger puppet who uses guns, just way more hardcore than Steve Rogers' Captain America. This is also a big Wolverine Easter egg for Marvel Phase 4 and Marvel Phase 5 as Captain America is Designation Weapons 1 in the Weapons Plus program. Wolverine is Designation Weapon 10. That's what the X stands for, Roman numeral 10. The Hulk himself is also kind of part of the Weapons Plus program because it was revealed during Incredible Hulk that Thunderbolt Ross had deceived him into working on gamma research as part of this telling him it was for something else, but secretly the Hulk was working on trying to replicate the Super Soldier Serum with Thunderbolt Ross. Right after he takes the serum, they take a bunch of his blood samples, which later Winter Soldier would be dispatched to steal from Howard Stark, killing him, allowing Hydra to reverse engineer the Super Soldier Serum and give it to several Winter Soldiers, which we would later see during Captain America Civil War. 
They also set up the last dance, quote unquote, reference between Steve and Peggy that they'd bring back at the end of the movie and again during Avengers Endgame when Captain America would go back in time to, quote unquote, stay with her for that last dance. And as part of all of this Captain America Super Soldier program, you've probably seen the trailer for Marvel's What If series. Episode one of that is literally going to be what if Peggy Carter had gotten the Super Soldier serum and what if Captain America had become Iron Man, where a version of skinny Steve Rogers gets this tank-like World War II version of the Iron Man armor. And when Peggy gets the Super Soldier serum, she becomes Captain Britain, not Captain America because she's British, not American. We see Captain America chase after that Hydra agent. He uses another improvised shield, just like Spider-Man would do using another car door. It has another star on it. Then when Red Skull is testing his new Tesseract weapons on the other soldiers, you notice a big Iron Man Easter egg. It sounds very similar to the way Iron Man's repulsor weapons sound. That's because Howard Stark used the Tesseract to try and create a source of limitless energy, just like the Red Skull did, eventually using it to create the original arc reactors which Iron Man would later perfect and use to create that new element. So effectively, this whole time, Iron Man's been using Infinity Stone technology to power himself, explaining why he can be so powerful in the MCU. Later, we would also see Howard Stark experimenting with his Infinity Stone energy source. It's foreshadowing for Iron Man creating that nano Infinity Gauntlet in Avengers Endgame. They begin that funny Captain America PR tour montage. He's wearing the first Captain America costume and that first shield. It's a reference to the original Captain America comics. But the PR tour itself is a reference to what they did with Captain America in the real world during World War II. The U.S. military actually used the Captain America comics as real life World War II propaganda to get the U.S. fired up to buy war bonds, just like they do during the movie, and pump up the U.S. troops during real life World War II. They even reference the cover of the very first Captain America comic book where he punches Hitler. Later, you see little kids actually reading that comic book in the movie. Later, when Captain America is sketching himself as a monkey, is a reference to Captain America in the comics being a sketch artist before he became Captain America. There was an Avengers deleted scene where he's also sketching the Avengers Tower outside in a cafe. Later, during Captain America Civil War, you saw that Iron Man actually has that original sketch on his desk, so I'm sure he has a bunch of Captain America original artwork in storage somewhere. It's probably worth a ton of money now. Cap goes AWOL to rescue the missing troops, which include the Howling Commandos from the comics. Kenneth Choi here is also the grandfather of Spider-Man's high school principal. You can see his picture in his office here. Kevin Feige also revealed some deleted scenes that they were going to have during this sequence too. He said that he had wanted to include a version of Wolverine in a cameo and a young version of Magneto because they were both part of World War II in the comics, but it would have been Hugh Jackman playing James Howlett as Wolverine long before he became Weapon X. There was also a cartoon that showed Wolverine's time with the Howling Commandos. Obviously, the reason why Hugh Jackman and a young Magneto weren't in the first Captain America movie was because Kevin Feige wasn't able to get a deal with Fox to use the characters at the time. But it would have been one of the best badass cameos ever. Then when they go back to the U.S. base, we see his vibranium shield for the first time. Howard Stark teasing that it's the only amount that they've been able to find on planet Earth because at this point in history, Wakanda was still so secretive, no one had learned about the existence of the larger vibranium mines yet. During the next Captain America montage of him on his missions, they show his compass with Peggy Carter's picture, which they would bring back several times in future MCU movies, and again during Avengers Endgame when he used it to distract himself. When they go to attack the train, Bucky references the Cyclone roller coaster at Coney Island. Later, they brought that back in Spider-Man Homecoming during that final fight scene. Bucky winds up using the shield, a reference to Bucky, Captain America in the comics, a moment that they bring back during Winter Soldier. There have also been many people to wield the shield in the comics. The most recent two in the MCU now are Falcon and U.S. Agent during the upcoming Falcon and Winter Soldier series. Captain America pursues Red Skull to his bomber and fights him until the Tesseract teleports him to Vormir, we later find, where he sought the Soul Stone only to die and be forced to become the guardian of the stone, guiding others on their quest to try and find it. So they have teased that a future version of Red Skull could come back in a future MCU movie at some point set in outer space. Cap says his final goodbye to Peggy as the plane goes down. They play their song, which they brought back during Avengers Endgame and during several other MCU movies. Howard Stark retrieves the Tesseract, then will eventually use it to create Project Pegasus, which they paid off in the Captain Marvel movie. 
And in this final scene, he wakes up in present day before the post credit scene for the Avengers movie with him training when Nick Fury comes to recruit him for the Avengers initiative because this was meant to be the last movie right before that first Avengers film. So as you can see, there was a ton of Marvel Phase 4 stuff that they set up in this first Captain America movie so many years ago. So much Wolverine, so much X-Men, and Fantastic Four moments. Everyone let me know if you spotted any big ones in the movie that I didn't mention in this video. What'll happen is, is my next big Infinity Saga rewatch video will obviously be for the first Avengers movie. While you wait for that, click here to learn about Marvel's brand new Ghost Rider project, and click here for all my Infinity Saga Marvel Phase 4 rewatch videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.